One of the first things we have to be aware of is that we're using the pendulum as an extension of our own energy field. We need to feel the pendulum's interaction, interaction with the energy field that we are testing. Uh, it's very common people start working in vibrational radiesthesia. They'll get the pendulum and they'll hold it at a dead hang over the thing they're going to test, let's say the battery in this case. And they'll have it at a dead hang and then they'll try to find the string length where there's some action. They still don't move it back and forth, just at a dead hang. And they watch it like something outside of them is going to do something. Like, you know, do something and surprise me. But the key thing is to actually feel what you're doing. Don't think about it from the outside. Don't watch it like some external observer. This is nothing but an extension of your own energy field. You're tuning, in this case, the string length to the particular string length that goes into resonance with the vibration of the, the pole of the battery. So once I've found it, I'll find the pole on the pendulum as a natural thing. But I'm doing that by feeling the pendulum as an extension of my own energy field. Also, sometimes when people will look and say, oh, well, you're moving your fingers. It doesn't matter whether you move your fingers or not. You're not trying to convince some external skeptic whether or not this is working uh, on its own because an external skeptic will never believe it whether your hand is rock still or not. What you want to do is be able to feel it yourself, to know that it's working. So always feel the pendulum as an extension of your own energetic field and participate in the feeling of it. Before I even see the pendulum move, I can feel an electrical tingle in my fingertips that's telling me I'm at the right string length to go into resonance with the thing that I'm testing. So it's extremely important that we have this feeling that the pendulum is simply an extension of my own energy field. I am feeling through it. And particularly in practices where I need to tune the string length on the pendulum, that I really have a feeling of when I get to different string lengths that I have an antenna of that length that's tuning into different qualities. The next thing is we want to make sure that you don't try to control the pendulum or program it with the mind. This is a very common tendency today, both because many people have either trained in mental dowsing, where they've been taught to program a pendulum and to talk to it, to tell it to do things, or simply because we're in such a mental culture today that people have this as their natural way of interaction. They get stuck in the mind and they are separate from their own feeling in the vibrational body. So we don't want to control its actions. We don't want to program it. We want to feel through the pendulum and let it act naturally according to the vibrational field it's interacting with. So our method of tuning the pendulum to different vibrational qualities can be done through particular types of shapes, as we're going to find later with, let's say, the BG3 pendulum. Or it can be done through specific angles built into the pendulum, such as with the virtual cone pendulum that we'll use later. Or it can be done, as we're seeing here, with a neutral pendulum through the string length. But these are all methods to tune the pendulum to a specific vibrational quality that you're testing for. When the vibrational quality that's built into the pendulum, either through string length or shape or angle, is connected to your energy field and then connected to the energy field of the thing that you're testing, if that energy quality that the pendulum is tuned to is present, you will naturally feel like something is pulling the pendulum. When I began to train with Dr. Kareem, that was the main thing he kept repeating. He said, just feel the pull. That's the key to the whole thing. I'm not programming it to make some action in response to uh, something I've told it to look for. I'm not trying to control its activity in any way. It will naturally feel the pull when I am feeling it as an extension of my energy field and when its tuning is at the same energy quality as the thing that I'm testing. If the energy quality that it's tuned to is not in what I'm testing, there will be no pull. I'll just stay in a back and forth position. But again, I'm not programming it. I'm going to let it naturally have a reaction which will naturally occur at the right string length over the phenomena that I'm testing. In this case, string length that tunes it to test polarity. Now we also want to stay focused on the process of learning to use the pendulum. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the feeling of learning to feel that the tool is an extension of your energy field. It's something magical. It's something that you're opening yourself up to a whole invisible world of vibration that was always around you, 
but you didn't have the eyes to see before. Now you're going to be making that invisible world of vibration that affects us all the time below the level of our consciousness. We're going to be making it visible. We're going to be able to interact with it. We're going to be able to co-create with it in a way that will be of great benefit to ourselves and other people. So really focus your awareness on the process and enjoying the process. Don't be so focused on the goal. When you're focused on the goal, then as soon as the first time you get a reaction and you've made it work, then what I see people do is they put the pendulum down. Okay, I've got it. I'm done. Those people will never get good at energetic testing. You have got to get to where you understand that the principle for energetic testing is that once it works for you, you're going to stay there. When I see the Egyptians, like Saeed Karim, who are excellent with vibrational testing, they will stay with the vibrational testing for a while, with a clear mind, with a meditative state of feeling the interaction between their energy field, the pendulum, and the energy field that they're testing. That gets their energy system to completely entrain to the vibration. It gets their energy pathways open. And it begins to make visible to them this entire invisible landscape of energy around us. So don't focus on the outcome. And don't put your pendulum down as soon as you get the reaction while you are training. You want to stay with it and enjoy the process, enjoy the whole feeling of getting the reaction, and let your system get used to it. Also, you want to keep your mind clear of thoughts to cut out what they call in the Eastern meditative traditions, the monkey mind chatter. Our mind is constantly chattering with all of these inconsequential things. Uh, what time is it? Uh, do I have to call so-and-so? Thinking about snippets of songs that we've heard, parts of a TV show that we just watched. All types of ephemeral things of no consequence constantly chattering in our mind. You've got to let that go and keep your, your mind clear of thoughts. You need to silence your mind so that you're not thinking in words. You simply have clear attention on the feeling of the pendulum connecting to the energy field being tested. Now, it's very common in classes that people will say, well, how can I possibly focus on it if I don't think in words or ask a question about it? But that's simply showing the fact that the person has not explored consciousness very deeply. And this is not a criticism of anyone. This is a wonderful thing to open ourselves up to if we have not explored it yet. In every field of deeper meditative training, one of the first things that you learn is that there's a deeper state of consciousness beyond that of simply thinking intellectually, thinking in terms of mental words. Getting to a place where you can hold the mind clear, but you have pure awareness, pure consciousness on one particular thing, that is a much deeper state of awareness. And just by holding that clear, open mind where you have pure awareness on the thing that you're working with vibrationally, will open up a whole new world to you. As long as you have this monkey mind chatter going on in the mind, uh, it's hard to really focus on the vibrational reality that we're connected to. The mind will keep projecting all its own thought forms, and you won't ever really be sure if the thing that you are picking up with the testing is something that you're projecting onto it and you're making the pendulum move, or that it's actually responding to the energetic field per se. So it's very, very important that you just keep this very calm, clear, focused awareness on the energy field that's being tested. And don't go into mental chatter, and don't think in terms of words, and don't use words to mentally program the pendulum, or, or ask it to look for a particular thing. I know that it's common even in physical radiesthesia circles for people to say, you want to uh, just ask a simple question of show me this or show me that. And it can work as an adjunct to the physical work, but I'm going to extend to you the opportunity to try it without the mental words. Try it with pure awareness. And after you've done that and you've experienced what that state is like, then you tell me which of the two is more effective. Which of the two gives you the sense that you are more clearly and accurately testing the energetic field.